Okay, it looks like we are once again live, uh, and this time uh, doesn't look like there's any feedback or anything. And I think I have my microphone turned on. Uh, yes, I actually have my microphone and camera turned on, so you can see me and hear me. Hopefully, uh, if you can hear me and see me out there, let me know because I can never tell. The last time I talked to you for five minutes, before I realized I couldn't see you. You couldn't. I mean, you couldn't see me. I can never see you. Uh, Thank God. Uh, <clears throat> not saying all of you are ugly, but most of you. Uh, <clears throat> well, not, not so much ugly as just disgusting. That that would probably be the disgusting would be more the problem than ugly. Although the ugly, don't undersell the ugly. Don't cut your, sell yourself short. Uh, only going to be able to do this for about an hour today because I've still got family in town. I got to go to Claim Jumper for dinner tonight at seven. And I was hoping to be able to get over on G Web's chat for a half hour a day, but I've never heard anything from him. He was supposed to text me something to let me know when he wanted me to come into the Second Amendment chat, uh, you know, the Every Second Matters chat, because it is uh, the second. And on the second, well, I open carry. So I'm open carrying today, as you can see, with my Does This Gun Make Me Look Fat shirt. Uh, and yes, I know it's not the gun, it's my gut and my ass that make me look fat. Well, and my new turkey wobble thing that I'm getting. This is new. This is, start getting this around 50. I don't know where it came from, but it's there. There's like there's parts of me that I didn't used to have. Uh, I'm going to be taking this. I got to open carry, so hopefully they won't give me any chat, any trouble. Although I have open carry there before and didn't give me any trouble. Uh. They have been doing the chat since 1 p.m. It's still going. Well, see, you never sent me nothing. I could have been on there before now. Uh, let's see here. I was recording a video a little bit ago. A bit ago. Wait till you turn 60. Yeah, no, it's not like I have more parts. I just have the parts I have are bigger, and they're not in the same places anymore. Well, not all of them are bigger. Uh, <clears throat> some could be getting bigger. I'd be happy. But, like, your neck gets bigger, and things are sliding away. It's like I have to keep convincing my face to stay on my skull. Should go get surgery. I should be like a who is who gets surgery a lot, like some person who gets a lot of plastic surgery. I guess because I, I guess Joan Rivers was one, but yeah. Can you see me with a little face look? That'd look a little better, I think. Uh, but to get things started, like I say, we're all gonna be able to do this about an hour, and I hope I'll be able to get into G Webs for at least twenty minutes or so, because then I got to go to dinner. But uh, if you got any questions, the uh, you can ask them here in the chat, or you can email them to me. And if you want to donate to the Puppy Fund, donate through the Super Chat button down here on the bottom. I'm trying to look at uh, email coming in and this at the same time. Uh, just push that button and you can donate to the Puppy Fund and your questions will pop up in a, in a, in a, in a live chat. Uh, oh, someone here is asking a question already. Labby, too. I wanted to pronounce, refer, pronounce his name because he's always here and he's always saying something. And donating to the puppy fund, so he's a puppy lover. Uh, hey Yankee, what are your thoughts on the Sig Sauer V Count V Crown Hollow Points? Have you tried them yet? No, I have not tried them. Uh, I haven't even had a chance to like look up other people that have tried them. Like, what were their opinions, and what are their what are they getting? I haven't I haven't even taken my chronometer off the shelf in the last couple of weeks. I haven't uh, gone anywhere, done anything. I don't know who makes their ammo. Six hour has this habit of buying stuff from other people, then putting their name on it. Like, I don't think they make their red dot sites. I don't think they make their hollow sites. I don't think they make, uh, I don't even know if they make their ammo. So I don't know what it is with them loving to buy stuff and put their name on it, but they love to do that. Uh, so, but I'm not saying it's bad ammo. I'm just saying I don't really have any experience with it yet. Uh, and hopefully, I mean, I will, but I've got so many ammos I already like. I mean, I'm not really looking for a new ammo. I mean, is anybody out there by now that uh, uh, that hasn't, you know, uh, figured out what ammo they like or found an ammo that suits their needs? Because, I mean, what more could an ammo do right now than what it normally does? I'm not saying they don't got any volume. I'm assuming the rest of you can hear me or else you would be saying a lot of stuff. Oh, uh, yeah, because it, yeah, it says once it's working, you need to refresh. Uh, <clears throat> I would hope most of you would speak up if no one could hear me. But I was saying, by this day and age, I, I don't know if there's any ammos that need to be improved upon or anything that they don't do uh, that could still keep them within tolerance levels for handguns. So, I mean, between, like, 
Buffalo Boar for the super powerful stuff and Underwood Extreme Penetrators and Corbon and Hornady and Spear and uh, Federal. I mean, there's pretty much everything out there you could possibly want, I think. Uh, I got to say, you're looking pretty jacked. <laughs> no, I don't look jacked. I look like I'm gaining weight. I lost 60 pounds and I've gained 15 of it back. I got to go back on another diet. I've uh, just been going a little crazy lately. Winter weight. I put on weight in the winter because we also have a lot of birthdays, so I eat a lot of cake. Uh, <clears throat> birthdays and Christmas parties and everything. So I have a face for radio. Well, I have a face for radio, but I have a voice for print media. So, excuse me. So I'm kind of screwed either way. Is it illegal to brandish a weapon to avoid a threatening situation? No, because if you if you are using your weapon to deter a threat, then that's not brandishing. Brandishing is uh, meant to intimidate. If you're trying to intimidate someone when you're the aggressor, uh, you have to be the aggressor for it to be brandishing in the legal definition of the word. Uh, so just kidding. What did he say? I don't know what you said. What did you were kidding about? I got to go look now. Oh, he's the one that said you have the face for radio. It was Keith Gregory. Uh, G Webs did not send me an email. He is lying his ass off because I have not seen any emails today about the chat. In fact, I'm looking right now. No emails from G Web. Lying bastard. I got my regular YouTube notification, it looks like here, but that wasn't from G Webs. That's from YouTube. Uh, <clears throat> I don't have any emails from you. So stop saying you sent me emails. Liar. I'm looking all the way back till 5 a.m. this morning. I'm not seeing anything from you. Here, let me search for your email address. Nope, the last email I've got from you is about laser light. So it's the last one I got from you. No more Jewish wars. What? Banshee webs. Yeah, for lying about sending me an email. Four hours ago. No, the last email I got from you was uh, 616. Uh, my fa uh, Jason W. donated to the public fund and is asking, my six my 586 L comp will be here tomorrow. Anything in particular I need to do before I take it to the range, or should it be good out of the box? I mean, they're good out of the box. You want to clean them. I always like to clean a gun, any gun, before I shoot it. Just make sure it isn't dirty from the factory. But, yeah, you know, there's nothing you need to do a revolver to take it, shoot it. Just take it, shoot it. And if you put 20 rounds through it and it works, it works. It's not like some of these people are like, you got to put 200 rounds through again and it'd be good. No, you don't do that with a revolver. Band Kool-Aid 688. Okay. I'll do that. Hi, Kool-Aid. Oh, look, you did all that typing and now everything you did was gone. <clears throat> Probably went to the trouble of creating an account and everything. And it just took a second to get rid of you. Uh, seen the Sig V Crown not expand in gel tests. Well, I've seen every ammo not expand in gel tests. I can't imagine. I don't know of an ammo I've seen that hasn't at some time failed a uh, gel test. Gel's not a good representation of much of anything, so I don't wouldn't really worry too much about it. it all gel is a consistent. It's not a consistency. It's not uh, or a consistency. It's not a uh, indication of anything it's just a consistent way to judge penetration that has no relevance to anything you will actually penetrate so oh unless you yeah well jiggly that could have something to do with something you penetrate never seen a full metal jacket fail a gel test does exactly what it's supposed to do well yeah it goes right through uh of course, they go right through the gel things. They'll be like, I'd never carry this ammo because it went through two links of gel. Well, yeah, but it ain't going to do that in a person. Stop thinking gel is people. So don't make so many decisions based on uh, uh, gel. Or, yeah, gel. That's what we we're talking about. I'm looking again for G, G Webs's. Nope, still nothing from G Webs. Resend it because I still don't have anything. Maybe it went to trash. Let's see if it went to junk. Uh, no, unless you sent me lingerie links or how to enlarge my penis or sportsman's guide stuff. I don't think it went to trash. Uh, but we, we, we will see, I guess. 
Uh, Dan D G or Chromo <laughs> is asking, uh, I'm deciding on getting a SIG P320 compact in 40 or 200 DS for inside waistband carry. Which would you recommend? I don't like inside waistband, but inside waistband, I think that 200 DS is going to be more comfortable just because of the way the gun's shaped. Uh, I, that's a tough decision between those two. I would say get the P320 for carry, but the 200 is going to carry more easily and then he sent a picture of his dog too so that's kind of a toss-up there oops am i missing stuff here because i didn't fail through if i miss anything let me know uh let's see shogun 917 yankee you should donate to vet ranch those guys are awesome and have no problem taking money from a gun channel well yeah and they also have no problem making money they're already a big name making money i would rather throw what little cred i have behind a company that would otherwise not make money that's doing good work i think uh, that ranch has no shortage of uh, supporters. I like to spread it around. At least that's what they always said about me in high school. Uh, I think they were talking about VD. Let's see. I just missed a Nick Federico is asking. I'm anxious, anxiously awaiting your rant video on gun channel sellouts. Well, you're going to get step one of it Monday because it's Monday's going to be my NRA rant about Dana the douche or whatever her name is. Uh, <clears throat> and then I'm going to that'll lead into my gun channel sellouts video. Speaking of other gun channels, though, someone was saying that uh, Mac gave me a shout out today. I haven't seen any videos today. Hopefully, it was a positive one. Hope he didn't tell any secrets. Uh, let's see. Gun porn, my current arsenal. Someone just sent me a picture of their guns. Well, for one, I'm going to ignore that there's a Keltec in the picture. Uh, I like that one. Definitely like the that one. I like that one. I like that one. Well, I like all of them except for that uh, Keltec up there on the top. You should sell that. Mac did a revolver video. Aha. What did he say? Did he call me out for being uh, uh, outdated and old? <clears throat> he said, you were going to start watching more, and he fell in love with a revolver. He said, I was going to start watching him more? I already watched his videos. I ain't going to watch him anymore. <clears throat> Colt, new Cobra, any thoughts? I liked the Colt Cobra. I thought it was a very cool little gun. Uh, a lot of people bitched about aspects of it, and I'm like, well, the things you're bitching about are things that make it a Colt. Uh, so never have never understood those people. There's a lot of people went there trying to pass judgment on it when Colt was giving people exactly what they wanted, something more similar to their old guns. CZ 97 BD for every second matters carry. No, I'm carrying my regular gun. I mean, you can, if you're asking me if you should, but yeah, I'm carrying my regular gun. I was too lazy to drag out another holster. So I'm just wearing what I was normally wearing. Uh, Maple Flavor is asking, why do you prefer Underwood Extreme Penetration over the Corbon DPX and 357 Magnum? Well, because the Corbon DPX lacks a little bit on weight and just a tiny bit on uh, velocity compared to the uh, extreme penetrators. Uh, the extreme penetrators, they get just a little bit faster. They're just a little bit heavier. And due to that solid front shape of theirs, they'll penetrate bulletproof glass where the DPX won't. So it gives you that little bit extra penetration. So I like that little bit extra hard barrier penetration. So that's why I go with it. Uh, hey, Yankee, what do you think of the... Taurus Ultralight. Is that Danielle or Daniel uh, Galloway? Uh, what do I think of the Taurus Ultralights? Oh, yeah, I think they're fine. I mean, I used to own a lot of Tauruses. I don't own any anymore. But as long as you take care of them, I think they're fine. Uh, you got to be careful because Taurus doesn't have great quality control. But And they went downhill a little bit there, I think, in the 90s and stuff. But I think they picked it back up some. I think they're doing a little better now quality-wise. The last couple I've checked out at the store seem to be pretty good. <clears throat> they don't run people over in America. They just get guns. So eventually they'll be running us over in America too. In fact, didn't it just happen not too long ago in Pennsylvania? Some girl got killed by some guy ran her over. Uh, you still own the judge Yankee. Yes, I do. It's upstairs on in my nightstand where actually it's in the safe on my nightstand. <clears throat> Keltec or Jimenez. Uh, I would rather have my toenails ripped out than carry either one of them. 
Greetings from your neighbors in Oregon. You're not my neighbors. I know my neighbors. <clears throat> you live across the river from me, but you're not my neighbor. Will Colt bring back other snakes? I don't know. It depends on how well the uh, the, the, new, the one they just put out does. I mean, if you if everybody runs out and buys one of those, they might do some new ones. So they'll never be the exact same, though. The the the, the uh, Python, if even if they remade the Python, it would not have the same trigger it used to have. Just like how the uh, uh, King Cobra. It didn't have the same type of king, uh, trigger the older guns did. Uh, so the newer guns would have more of a trigger like a King Cobra than, than a uh, Python. So if you're waiting for the old Pythons with the old type of uh, trigger to come back, it's not going to happen. They just can't manufacture those in any way to make money nowadays. So Louis... Puga, Puga, my friend wants to, wants to trade a Smith & Wesson 686 4-inch Pro Series SSR stock service revolver for my 200DS Rhino. Do you think that's a bad trade? Should I trade? Mm, it's not a bad trade. Uh, those are both really nice. Uh, the Rhino is more unique. If you're carrying the Rhino, I'd keep it and wouldn't make the trade. If you're not carrying the Rhino, I, I would make the trade. That's about the only way I would, that's the way I would make that decision. Uh, live chat here. Jeff Stouse, Stouse is asking, how do I find out more about Every Second Matters? Well, that's an easy question to answer. Go to Every Second Matters. Just Google it. Just Google Every Second Matters with the second not being spelled out being a 2ND. So every 2ND matters. Uh, just Google it. Go over to gunchannels.com. Go to one of the, the Every Second Matters websites. Uh, Find out, mo you know, anything you want to know over there. You can order shirts and things. I think you can still order shirts and stuff. Uh, patches. Go over and uh, just look it up. Like I say, just use Google. Google's your friend. <clears throat> Shogun917 is asking, Yankee, I have a cousin applying to police departments. How, oops, why did I just to lose your, there we go. Ah, uh, replying to police departments, how can he convince the police chief investigator he is not a crazy gun nut and is just a hobbyist? Police have all purchase records. Yes, he will tell the truth, but is there more convincing, truthful argument he can make? Uh, well, it probably won't even come up. Uh, I was never asked. I was never even asked here locally in this area when I thought about going back to work not too long ago. Never, never was even a topic. Uh, it's always best to not uh, volunteer any information they don't ask for is the best information I can give you. So I don't think it'll be a problem. He fucking gushes over a 686. Is that Mac you're talking about? I'm going to carry a 586. So I've got a 686 in there. I might carry some because I just put night sights on it. But I like my 586. There's something with that 586. I know a lot of people think I prefer a stainless gun, but I don't. I prefer the looks of a black gun or a blued gun, a heavy blued gun or a black gun. I prefer the looks of them the finish just wears off and then you have bare steel and you have to care for it and keep it cleaner and oiled and retreat it, you know, refinish it. You know, you don't have to do that with stainless. You don't have to worry about it. So that's why I go with stainless most often. I mean, a stainless gun can look good, especially a bright stainless gun, like poly stainless. Now that's beautiful, but you can't carry them hardly because they get so fingerprinty or smudgy or, you know, just, but so the black guns just look the best to me, but uh, they're not as durable. Someone just said Dubai. I don't know why. Have you ever ordered anything from a comic book like Sea Monkeys or X-Ray Specs? Oh, yeah, many times. When I was a kid, you could get some pretty amazing things out of comic books. You could order uh, some of the old comic books I had had ads in the back for ordering like 22 rifles. So you could order a lot of cool stuff when I was a kid from magazines, and I did. Of course, back then, it seemed like it took forever to get anything you ordered. I mean, kids are spoiled these days in the day of two-day shipping from Amazon. Back then, you would get together your box tops or whatever, or send off your letter to wherever the ordering place is. You would get them back in like six to eight weeks, and that seems like forever when you're a kid. You start checking that mailbox every day, and it takes forever. Hey, Yankee, what's the difference between L-Comp and Carry-Comp? Uh, well, the 
L comp is an L frame comp, and the carry comp is uh, well, the one I have is a uh, in frame. Uh, so I think that's the why they call that one an L comp because it's an L frame, K L frame. So in the carry comp, my twenty six twenty nine is a carry comp, and it's a in frame. Okay, make sure I haven't missed anything over here. Da, da, da. What are your thoughts on the California 10 round mag put on hold? Uh, 10 round mag limit put on hold. Uh, I agree completely with the judge who said it's garbage that does nothing but turn uh, law abiding citizens into criminals and there's nothing positive about it. So I agree with him 100%. Uh, hey, Yankee, just picked up a Smith & Wesson. This is from Timothy Smith. Just picked up a Smith & Wesson 686 3-inch and decided to put hogue wood grips on it. When reading the info that came with the grips, it recommends removing the springs before the grips before cleaning. Do you remove your wood grips before cleaning your guns? Yes, always. If I have wood grips on a gun, I always take them off before I give a gun a thorough cleaning. Now, if I'm just wiping it down with like a microfiber cloth or something, no. But if I'm using any solvents, any oils, etc., I definitely take the wood grips off. You'll increase the life of your grips tenfold if you take them off when you clean your gun. Because those things that clean guns destroy wood. Excuse me, burped again. Uh, hey, Yankee, can your baking soda cleaning technique work on nickel plating? Uh, well, the problem with doing that on nickel plating is if there's any cracks in your plating that gets under the nickel plating and peels it off if it's not good plating. So be very careful when cleaning nickel plating any in any way. Uh, Josie Lawman 71 is asking, hey, hi Yankee, been thinking about selling my Gen 3 Glock 21 for an M&P 2.0 and 40 cal. What are your thoughts? Pfft, don't. Uh, that's my thoughts. Uh, I mean, it's, it's, they're they're both good guns, and the the I think probably if I was being honest, I think the the uh, Smith and Wesson is probably a little bit better gun. I just don't like it. So, but if you like it, it's probably a little better gun. So go ahead. <clears throat> uh, James Sif Sifuentes got my Beretta ninety two A one. Man, you were so right. This is an amazing gun. Got a light on it. It's uh, street light TLR one HL and now I can't find a decent holster. Any suggestions? Uh, yes, call Renaissance Holsters. They'll make you one that holds that goes with the light. Uh, they make custom holsters that are very nice. Do you have any experience with the Sig 2022? Uh, 22, uh, bleh, 2022. I think I said it right the first time. What do you think about it? Uh, I think it is a good gun. I think it is a great gun for the price. I love the fact that it's double action, single action and an affordable platform. I love it. That's an affordable introduction to Sig Sauer pistols for people. So I have nothing but positive things to say about the 2022. Is it the most refined gun Sig makes? No. Is it the best gun Sig makes? No. Is it uh, even close to the best gun Sig makes? No. But it's, uh, like I said, it, for what it is, it's very good. Uh, Rock Humper donated, and that was, who was it? That, that was Big Mac that donated to the Puppy Fund to ask that question. Rock Humper donated to the Puppy Fund and says, what might cause a particular chamber on a revolver to consistently cause hammer and trigger to lock up with heavy resistance? My 686, my 586 does this. You mean, uh, well, it's almost impossible to diagnose these things uh, offhand without seeing them. Usually one chamber can't do that uh, because unless your spur is, unless your star is bad, uh, you know, the little gears on the star, unless something's wrong with one of those, it seems very unlikely that that can happen unless your cylinder's off kilter, which sometimes can be because someone took the crane out and then put it back with either the wrong screw or didn't put the screw in properly and now your crane is not seated properly. That can sometimes cause it, and it would probably seem like it's on the same cylinder every time, but it's actually just the same spot in the revolution most times. So <clears throat> uh, without seeing it, it's hard to say, but there's a couple of things that could be wrong with it right there. Uh, Yankee, do you like Star Wars? Of course I like Star Wars. I was a kid when it came out. I saw it, all of them in the original theater versions. So love Star Wars and love Star Trek. I grew up on Star Trek too. I'm not one of these people that believes you have to be a Trekker or a, a Star Wars lover. I'm a firm believer of both. 
I don't mind seeing someone walk down the street in their Jedi robes with their phaser. <clears throat> Star Wars or Lord of the Rings? I love Lord of the Rings too. I'm not someone who thinks that you know you fall into camps on these. I think so many people do, but I love all of it. Well, not all of it. I don't love everything, but uh, like I don't like anime or anything. But uh, what are they saying? The shapeshifter is amazing. Are they talking about Odo and Deep Space Nine? What are they talking about? Uh, I've already answered that one. Yankee, do you speak Klingon? No. What, I look like a nerd? <clears throat> I barely speak English, much less uh, anything else. I can't even think of another language. Uh, <clears throat> let's see here. Mike0621 is asking, I'm lucky enough for my job allows me to carry at work, but I am having a hard time finding a holster that is comfortable to carry while lifting heavy timbers and stacking lumber all day long. Do you have any suggestions for an inside the waistband holster that might fit the bill or possibly an outside the waistband holster? Well, you know, this would be a time when I think uh, that uh, urban carry holster, what is that thing? That thing that pops up that I got? would be great because it's really comfortable when you're standing and walking around and doing stuff. Uh, and it's not really, it doesn't put it up here in your waist. It puts it down here on your thigh and that would be awesome for what your job you're saying. So I'm trying to read this here too. At the same time as talking, I can't do two things at once. If I try to drink and walk, I'd fall on my face. Uh, maybe it's cause I was drunk. Uh, <clears throat> But uh, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, that uh, urban carry thing that pops up. It's really difficult to get to if you're sitting down or anything like that. But if you're walking around all day, I think it'd be a great, uh, great holster. I would give it a try. Trent, EMF Hartford. What do you think of the metallurgy of the 1892 uh, EMF ha uh, Hartfords by, made by Rossi? Actually, I do believe they are made uh, by... Uh, Bianchi, not no, not Bianchi. Uh, EMF Hartford by I, I own two EMF Hartfords, uh, so I'm trying to think of the company that makes all those guns. All those Uberti, Uberti is I think who makes those really. Uberti just makes them and ships them out to everyone. Ross might, it, might Rossi might own Uberti now, but uh, when I got mine, I ordered EMF Hartfords and they came. The receipt said EMF Hartfords. The guns said EMF Hartford, but the box said Uberti. <clears throat> with the right serial number on it. because So they, they were Uberti's. They just had been finished by EMF. Uh, I will look and see here really quickly uh, to see if I can find a picture of my EMF Hartfords. All right, there's one. Oh, nope, that's that's a like a, a redo of it. Okay, there we go. Now I will see if I can show you this and you can see. There you go. Can everybody see those? And you see that it's got my little uh, logo right there on the grips. These were my cowboy action shooting guns. Got my logo on the outside. And if you're wondering why it's only on one side of each grip, if you're wondering why it's on the same side, it's because one was carried strong side and one was carried cross draw. So the same side of each gun faced outwards. So that's why that. I don't know if y'all can see those or not. Uh, <clears throat> whoops, did I miss a chat? Stephen Burnside, should I screw the rules and carry at retail jobs? Well, I mean, if you don't worry about losing the job, go ahead. If you can't afford to lose your job, I probably wouldn't. But uh, if you can, most retail places, I I have found that if you work someplace retail like the mall or something like that, situational awareness will be enough to keep you alive. If you're smart enough to know what you're going to do and where you're going to go if something goes wrong and smart enough to pay attention to your surroundings, alert enough to pay attention to your surroundings, you're probably not going to die in any mass attack like that at all, unless it's a bomb and then there's nothing you can do anyway. So if you can't afford to lose your job, just concentrate on situational awareness and having a plan to survive. Uh, if you can afford to lose your job, then, then carry. But I wouldn't tell anyone to lose their job. How important, how important money can be. And that was from Stephen Burnside, who donated to the puppy fund there. It almost got past me. You're lucky I saw that one. I don't know what I was looking at when I saw it, but I saw something. Uh, what's someone asking? Yes, it's illegal. It's called menacing. What are they, who are they referring to? I'm not sure what they're talking about. Who's talking about menacing over here? 
Yeah, can you speak West Virginian? No, I can't speak West Virginian. We speak just like everybody. We talk. We, I should say we talk just like everybody else in West Virginia. Uh, we speak uh, the English. Uh, okay, what are they talking about? About I missed uh, something about menacing. I was wondering what that was. That was kind of... Uh, now no one's answering me. Y'all aren't even paying attention to me. You're all having your own conversations, and you're not paying any attention to me. What I'm asking. Uh, let's see here. Ask Kinky what he thinks of buds. You probably shouldn't. It's going to be a 15 minute rant on uh, Yankee. Why haven't you lost your accent yet? How long you live in Washington? I don't have an accent. I have lost my accent. I used to have an accent. I don't have one now. Uh, I've lived in Washington. Well, I've lived within a few miles of where I'm at right now uh, in different places in the state, you know, but still in Portland and Vancouver for 21 years. So that's why my accent's gone. Uh, have you checked out the Bursa BP9CC yet? No. That was from Stacy Smith, who donated to the Puppy Fund. Uh, no, I have not. Not the biggest Bursa fan. So, no, I haven't. I might. I might look at them eventually. I'm running out of things I want, so I might start looking at things I wouldn't normally want. Pulling a gun on someone during road rage if they're the aggressor. No, if you pull a gun on someone who's an aggressor towards you, that is not menacing. It is not brandishing. Menacing cannot be applicable if you are defending yourself. Menacing also requires you to be the aggressor. Like if you walk up to some, if someone walks up to you with a pipe and, or walks up to you with a pipe in their hand and says, I'm going to cave your skull in and you pull your gun out and say, get away from me, that's not menacing. Uh, you're not creating a situation of fear. You're not creating an environment of fear. You are simply defending your life. There's no at that, at that point, that is not menacing. That is not brandishing. If you're getting in an argument with someone and you pull your gun out and say, don't mess with me, well, that's menacing. That's brandishing. Uh, you've become the aggressor now. If you are the defender, it's not menacing or uh, brandishing. If you're the aggressor, it is. Uh, let's see here. Oops. Uh, Clover Tack has donated to the Puppy Fund and is asking, Kirk or Picard? I actually, even though I am of the generation of Kirk, I actually think I like Picard better. So he's more of a thinking man, doesn't boff every green chick he meets. So I kind of like Picard better. Military Arm Channel is starting to like revolvers again. Opinions, thoughts. Well, you know, semi-autos, are flashy and cool and you know they're easy to get lured into because they're so cool and everyone else got one it's like you know like back it's kind of like wearing parachute pants back when in the 80s uh you know everybody did it because everybody else was doing it it was stupid but we did it uh i didn't because i own any because it was poor but uh people wore parachute pants it, semi autos are kind of the same it's easy to fall into that trap because everybody else is doing it but you know you eventually kind of figure out jeans are better than parachute pants you go back jeans just like you eventually realize that revolvers are more than adequate for what we need them for and they're far better made uh well if you get a good one and they're better machines if you get a good one so people go back to them tmac will never carry tim i guess that's tim at military arm channel will never carry a wheel gun yeah he might he might Worf was getting the pussy, or he pussy. I don't know what he pussy means. But no, and you made me say pussy, too. Like four times. Thoughts on the Colt Cobra? I've already said I uh, thought it was a good gun. I thought it was a nice little gun. I thought it was very Colt-like. So, I like it. Tickles, I hope that's not your real name. You talking to me? Uh, I definitely don't. Tickles is not real. Definitely not my main name. You need a Henry 327 mag if they ever ship. Well, we'll see. We'll see if they ship. Uh, Mac will carry one on the trip. LOL. But Tim said revolvers are not as reliable. No, that's not true at all. No one can make that argument. People try to make that argument based on a fallacy. They make that argument based on, aha, if a revolver has a catastrophic failure, it's, you know, it's, it's out of the fight, whereas a semi-auto can usually be fixed. Well, that would own, that argument would only hold weight if revolvers and semi-autos had catastrophic failure, if, if revolvers had catastrophic failures at the same right rate that semi-autos have failures, period, which it doesn't. They have far fewer catastrophic uh, failures than 
semi-autos. In fact, semi-autos have more catastrophic failures than, than revolvers, plus they have all those fa failures that can be cleared. So in the end, they're still nowhere near as, uh, as reliable as revolvers. Uh, a totally original Aber Abergine is saying, if, you think, if you're thinking about buying something you normally wouldn't, go for a Webley. Uh, you don't have any top breakers, if I recall. I don't. I wouldn't mind having a Webley, actually. Uh, so I wouldn't mind that at all. Why am I getting uh, text here? Oh, hold on. My sister is asking what time is dinner. 7 p.m. at Claim Jumper. Why don't any of you bitches show up at Claim Jumper looking for me tonight? <clears throat> okay. I probably should have muted when I did that. Uh, let's see here. He had to bash a Smith & Wesson with a mallet in the vid. It locked up. <laughs> yeah. Revolvers can have crip jumping. Yeah, especially if you use uh, non-revolver calibers like 9mm 40. Of course, so do semi-autos that yank on the bolts real hard like that. What's that thing called? I forget the name of it right now. Boberg. Which is another company I'm mad at. Uh, you know, you already know that uh, uh, Kiapa's on my shit list because they promised me one of the three-inch revolvers and then they, they, then they fell off face the earth stopped talking to me after they didn't give it to me. Uh, and, although I still like my rhinos. I'm not happy with Kiapa. Uh, another one is fucking Bond Arms. They promised me they'd get me one of the first ones. They put me on the list and give me the option to buy one of the first ones of their new Boberg clone. Not heard a word from them. Every time I see them at SHOT Show, they're like, yeah, we'll get you this and we'll get you that and blah, blah, blah. And I never hear from them again. Or we'll get you on the list to buy one of these or we'll sell you one of those. We'll sell it directly to you, blah, blah, blah. Never hear from them again. So last time they were going to get me some grips and send me and uh, I was going to pay for them, but then never heard from them again. I can't stand companies that don't follow through with their customers. I think most people out there that watch me know if I make a promise to an individual, I follow through on it, whether I want to or not. Does bullet weight matter? Well, yeah, because whenever you're figuring, you know, damage, you've got to figure the velocity and the mass and et cetera. And it also, you know, there's scales of where at the same velocity, a certain amount of mass will penetrate a barrier and a certain amount won't. They'll react differently to different barriers. So yeah, weight is a big factor in ammo. Like if you shoot a 60 caliber or a 60 grain bullet uh, at a 1,500 feet per second or 2,000 feet per second even, it's still not going to have the same penetration power as a heavier round moving at similar speeds. Like a uh, 140 grain copper bullet traveling at 14 to 1500 feet per second goes right through bulletproof glass. Like my Liberty Defense 60 going 2000 feet per second, second at 60 it just flattens, it just splatters basically against it. So yeah, it, weight does matter when you're doing your mathematic calculation there. Robert B. Co uh, I want to say Koala, that's Kohler, uh, donated to the Puppy Fund. And what is it now, people? What is it now? People won't leave me alone today. I got family in town from both sides of the family, and it's just been hectic. Hectic, hectic, hectic. I got stuck babysitting yesterday. Here's the thing. My oldest son was sick, so I stayed home with him. So I ended up babysitting uh, uh, my son's cousins also because my youngest one stayed home. And everybody else got to go zip lining. Everybody else. Carol, uh, Kristen, uh, Scott. Everybody got to go zip lining, except for me. I had to stay home, and then they send, and then the motherfuckers text me videos of them zip lining. Now, now that's assholes. I'm related to assholes. Not only did I not get to go, my oldest is feeling better, a little bit better today, but he's been puking for like five days, and then hold down food or water. We took him to the doctor twice, and they think it's viral, but they wouldn't do a CT scan because I didn't go with him the last time. I'm more forceful about. Get off your fucking ass, give him a CT scan. But uh, <clears throat> I don't know what I missed here. Do you think Chad from Iraqi Veteran 888 is a chode? Uh, no, I'm going to say no. But, you know, I really don't know who Chad is. So, which I think is like saying he's a big dick. And you know what chode means. But uh, I don't know Chad. So I can't say. 
You know, I really quit watching Iraqi veteran for the most part after his sidekick passed away. Uh, that was why I was watching Iraqi veteran. Uh, he's more of the big budget uh, videos. And I'm not looking for big budget videos and explosions and stuff. That's not what I'm looking for. So <clears throat> not really my cup of tea. I'm usually looking for just basic reviews or uh, opinions, you know, opinion videos or, you know, just someone saying something. Uh, oh, I don't know. You know, saying something. Uh, Carlos Finch donated to the puppy fund and said, should I be worried about the little cylinder wobble? Uh, your little cylinder wobbles. Uh, in my Taurus 605 during lockup, I have heard about 150 rounds through without issues. Well, it depends on how much the cylinder wobbles. I mean, cylinders do wobble a little bit. I mean, you can hear that. See, and I will take the ammo out. And no, there's not one in the chamber. I had someone asked me that the other day, but are you sure there's not one in the chamber? I'm, uh, <laughs> after I did the, the speed loader out of my gun. Okay, so now I'm going to lock it up. And it's still a little. There's not much, but there's a little. You're always, And if you're doing it with soft fingers, you'll notice it more. But if you squeeze tight, You'll notice a little bit of wiggle, but nothing. You can really even, you can't even really see it wiggling hardly. You can just feel it, but it's nothing like it is when it's unlocked. So let's put these back in there. My Underwood Extreme Penetrator. Free plug for Underwood Extreme Penetrators. If y'all want to start sending me free ammo, you know, you know where to find me. I'd love some free ammo. I don't mind selling out the stuff I like. I just won't sell out the stuff I don't agree with. Uh, <clears throat> so, no, it depends on how much it is. I mean, if I could feel it for you, uh, if you let me feel it, I'd be able to tell you if there's anything wrong with it. But uh, as of right now, I'll just have to guess and say probably not a problem, but could be if it's too much wobble. Uh, let's move on. This hour is going by quick. We've only got like uh, 18 minutes left. And, and I still don't have anything from G-Webs. So, wait a second. I'm in the wrong. Let's see if he sent anything. Mm, 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 mm. No, he has, still hasn't sent me anything. They got no emails from G-Webs. Let me check my uh, trash again just to make sure it didn't go straight to junk. No, nothing from G-Webs. I think he's just saying he wants me over there, but it doesn't really. Uh, Ed and Jacqueline Caulfield are asking Yankee, some of the guys I shoot with love cowboy action and rave about it to no end. Oh, okay. It's not a question. That's a statement. Yeah. Cowboy action shooting is fun. Uh, it's a lot of fun. I'd still be doing it if it hadn't at the same time, if I hadn't gotten into paintball because paintball was more fun and you didn't have to wear as much costume. So loved paintball. And you actually get to shoot people in paintball, not kill them. I don't want to kill anybody, but I do like to shoot them with the paintballs. This is mine. It's stamped Rossi. Well, that's the rifle. Yeah, yeah. Yours is the rifle. So, yeah, that's probably made by Rossi. I know Uberti makes all their single action revolvers. <clears throat> that was Trent again about his Hartford. Yankee, you should check out Trigun. The main character uses a gun that fires from the bottom like the rhino. I think it actually is a rhino that they use, to be honest. Uh, Yankee, what are the weights on of your double action, single action triggers, and what cylinder do you carry the silver bullet in? Uh, I carry the silver bullet in the second chamber, meaning that's going to be the one that fires first. I guess you would call it the second chamber. It's the one off the top. If I cock the hammer or pull the trigger, it'll be in the in the line of fire there uh what are my trigger weights you know i don't really keep a memory of what the trigger weight is but you know i'll wait i don't have my measuring thing over here i was going to measure it right now but uh i'm sure i've listed it in videos maybe next time i'll make sure to have my little gauge here and i'll measure it live while we're sitting here uh, instructions not clear shot myself with silver bullet well you know that happens. If you're not dead, you're not a werewolf. So at least you learned something positive about yourself today. You learned you're not a werewolf. 
or you're just not a very good shot. Well, I think you hit a werewolf anywhere with a silver bullet, they die because they die from the poisoning of the silver, not from the bullet wound. So, yeah, you're not a werewolf. There's a plus to your day. You can say, I shot myself, but not a werewolf. Uh, hey, Yankee. So because you own a bunch of guns, I'm wondering two things. One, do you carry a variety of guns in a rotation? Not really. Uh, two, do you have any advice for switching from gun to gun since they can be all kind of different with the grips, etc.? You know, my biggest, uh, oh boy, did you ever get to check out the Gunsmith Cats comics? No, I still haven't had a chance to do any of that. Uh, well, no, I don't really switch out a lot. I mean, I've ch carried a lot of different guns, go back and forth from different ones. Uh, but Wait a second, I'm looking at something over here real quick. I'll get back to you. Hold on. I'm looking at something over here. I wanted to see what. I had one for two years and sold it. Constant issues. I don't know what they're talking about. Why do revolvers have heavy triggers? Well, they don't really. I mean, double actions are sometimes a little heavier because you're, it's a double action. But their single action triggers are usually lighter than uh, semi-autos. Uh, Chad is a decorated vet. Uh, I don't know if that mad would matter whether he was a dick or not. <laughs> I was in the military. There's lots of dicks in the military. <laughs> there are dicks, rapists, assholes, everything in the military. Just like if they're out there in the population, they're also in the military. Unfortunately, sometimes they end up in a little higher concentration in the military because you used to have a lot of practices in the South of saying, hey, do you want to go to jail or do you want to join the military? So that fed a few uh, bad apples into the military more than. Uh, let's see here. Oh, I'll, yeah, I don't switch carry guns very often. My biggest advice to people that if they do switch uh, carry guns is, what now? Uh, is uh, make sure they have the same manual of arms. Try to stick to guns that shoot similarly, uh, meaning they're just pull and shoot. Don't like carry a gun some days that has a manual safety and some guy in some days that don't. You know, just try to stick to a gun that you do the same thing on every time. Uh, 97 Bravo was my MOS. I don't know if it's still the same thing or not. <clears throat> Should be. Uh, Craig Rice. Good Lord, he wrote his whole comment up in the, the comments. He's got like three sentence, three lines of uh, text up here in the subject matter and nothing in the video. People tell me ammo kept in a vehicle should be rotated out or used or it will go bad. Who tells you that? Because that's garbage. <clears throat> I mean, I guess you could have bad ammo, but if you have quality ammo, it ain't going to go bad just being in your car stored. No more than it goes bad stored in your safe, unless it's getting wet, unless you're getting it wet inside your car somehow. Uh, Yankee, I know you're not a big 1911 fan, but any thoughts on the new Ruger SR 1911 10 millimeter? I didn't like the looks of the thing, for one. Uh, I already answered what was my most in the Army. I said 97 Bravo. Uh, <clears throat> Just not a fan of it. I don't like the looks of it. It looks a little weird. It looks, I don't know, just the way they set it up, just the options it comes with, I didn't like the looks of. And I'm not really that big a fan of 1911s anyway, like you said. So, I mean, I love them. I like them, love them, the historic, history of them, but I like Colts. So, uh, let's see here. Victoria Brabal. Thanks for the advice on which firearm to purchase, the P320C with red dot or the Shockwave. Still waiting for out-of-stock Shockwave. We went with the P320C. Love using the red dot. Hit everything we're aiming at. Yeah, that, that red dot really makes a big difference. If you've never shot with the red dot sights, don't slam them. I mean, I used to, but if you haven't, don't slam them. Try them, and you might just be like, <laughs> red dot for me from now on out, because I know with my failing eyesight, they're awesome. Let's see here. Hi, Yankee. This is from Bleep Bloop 47406. And they're asking, I'm 26 and got into shooting and collecting firearms when I was 23 while living at home for cheap for, for cheap rent, Korean parents. Well, if they got Korean parents, aren't you Korean too of descent, not nationality? Uh, I amassed a collection of about 30 firearms, mostly Millsurp, since I'm stuck in New Jersey. I'm about to move out to a new apartment, but my roommates don't want guns in the apartment. My parents are fine with me keeping the guns at home locked up in a safe, but I don't think I'll have a permanent place for my of my own for another year or so. Hopefully far away from Metro New York City, moving around 30 plus guns is a huge pain in the ass, especially in a fucked up state such as mine. Should I just try to call what I have and put the money towards a house 
living expenses or should I keep them and lock up with my folks until I get out of the area? Do you need the money? If you need the money, sell them and get the money. Money, you know, food and rent come before guns. Uh, I don't want to be homeless with a rifle. So you're going to end up trading that rifle for something eventually. You're going to be trading something for something. Hopefully the rifle would go first. Uh, although I can't say that'd be true. I think I might keep my rifle. But uh, if you need the money, sell them. If you don't, keep them. What's your opinion on the SIG P250 subcompact? I like the one with the rail. Uh, the one that's got the little slanty front, I don't care as much for. But the one that actually has a rail, I think has a better ergonomics. So I like the one with the rail. If you can find one of the subcompact uh, grip frames that has the rail, uh, more power to you because they're good. I have an old Smith & Wesson model 36, 38 special. What is your thoughts on this model, Smith & Wesson? I think it's 38 special, and I think it's a good little revolver. That's pretty much the only thoughts I have about it. Question was how to kill. Okay, I missed that. Uh, Yankee Marshall, what are your thoughts on the practicality of a cane gun? I don't think they're practical. Uh, I guess that answers your question. Food and rent before guns. Yeah, if you're starving to death and don't have any place to live, your guns ain't going to do you much good for very long. You got to have priorities in life. Can't feed your children bullets. Uh, let's see here. Got another question coming. Yankee, did I miss news on the puppy that may need surgery? No, I'll know tomorrow, Monday. He has to go to the vet on Monday. They said they're going to take him about 7.30 tomorrow. And then if he needs the surgery and can take the surgery, they're going to have to transfer him to a specialist. They're going to go ahead and schedule it. And then I'm going to contact the specialist and pay for it. And then we'll go from there. So let's get rolling here. So no, you didn't miss it. And I think I've answered all the uh, super chat questions now. Uh, F-J-A-M, F-J Amato, I guess, donated $2 to the puppy fund. He did not ask a question, but he donated to the puppy fund. Um, which I might, some of the money I get this month off of this might have to go pay towards that uh, other dog if I don't get the money raised. So, but hopefully not. Hopefully I can give this money to uh, Dove Lewis or another cause. Because I don't want to get stuck with the bill for that dog. As cute as that dog is, I still don't want to get stuck with a bill for it. Uh, 04 Hemi has astigmatism. Me too. Just aim with the right dot. <clears throat> well, you people with astigmatisms, uh, you don't. Know, genetic defect wipe you know survival the fittest clean out the uh buffering buffering i don't know who's buffering uh yankee thinking of becoming a pimp how many employees should i start with i believe you have some knowledge on this subject well if you don't have three girls you should never start or three employees they don't have to be girls i guess that's sexist uh they can be boy, girl, or anything in between, I guess. As long as you have three, I think you'll do okay. In fact, it might be good to have a boy, girl, and an in-between. So you got all your bases covered. So, But I think three is really the minimum to get started. A, a one pimp, a one girl, one employee organization being a pimp, that isn't being a pimp. That's just selling out your partner. So I not really don't think that's going to go very far. Need at least three, I would think. Supper lag. You mean supper lag? Well, I don't know why it's lagging. Oh, I'm not going to have time to do the giveaway today. I was going to do the giveaway today, but we've only got a few minutes left. Uh, I will do all that stuff and notif and do the giveaway on Thursday, this Thursday. So that will... Uh, how do you like the Marvin holster? Uh, this is from Garage Guns. I, I actually think it's very cool. I haven't had a chance to wear it yet. I was going to wear it today and carry my 686, but I had put it in with my holsters and I didn't want to dig it out. So I've, I already thought I'm going to next time I have open carry, I'm going to wear that holster. Uh, and maybe be wearing it before then because I'm going to switch from my 586 to my 686 for a while, just uh, seeing how I like it. I don't think I like it as well as my 586. I'll probably go back to my 586. But you never know till you try. So I'm going to try. Uh, hi, Yankee. This is from Major Jakes. Uh, that's another thing I'm never going to answer. Uh, thanks for the channel. Okay. You're welcome. Please describe the difference in felt recoil of the 357 SIG versus the 40 Smith & Wesson. I think the 40 Smith & Wesson is just a little more. I just feel a little more kick from the 40 Smith and Wesson, probably simply because you're moving more mass uh, would be my biggest guess, but mm, very similar, but the 40 is a little snappier 
than the 357C. Uh, Mr. Ewok is saying, I live in a house that's divided into apartments. I try to keep a low profile in life. The guy that lives below me put big pride flags in the windows of the front of the house. I am conflicted because I support their right to express themselves, but also I don't like the attention that's drawing to where I live. Uh, I don't want to start a fight by stifling their rights, but don't want to attention from the banners. In these times, should I worry about the potential for evil people to target me uh, because of the house where am I just crazy person and get over it? I say just get over it. Uh, they have every right to display whatever they want on their property. Uh, they're renting that property. I mean, you always have the option of moving, but unless they're actually presenting you with a, a danger, you know, an unhealthy or unsafe situation, which I don't really think that qualifies as an unhealthy, unhealthy or an uh, uh, unha uh, or unsafe situation, because I think the the few the few and far between that would actually act on something like that are not enough to constitute an actual threat. So <clears throat> I wouldn't worry about it. Maybe be a little more vigilant if you want to be. Never, there's always a good reason to be more vigilant. Uh, Yankee, did you ever have any biological kids? Uh, none that I know of. Uh, might be a lot of socks pregnant out there from when I was a teenager. Uh, I know you adopted. You seem like a great, kind father. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> ask my kids that, how great I am. Uh, sometimes they'll tell you I'm the best, and then other times they'll tell you I'm a dick. Like right now, I'm sure my youngest will tell me I'm a dick. Because I took his uh, video games away from him last night until he cleans his room. <clears throat> Happy fourth, sir. What's well, not the fourth yet? It's the second. It's every second matters, which is almost as an important holiday as July 4th now. So but not quite. I'm not saying it is just saying close. Uh, the main reason I, I, I just, I mean, I guess I could have had a biological child, but my family tree is not so great that it needs any more branches and there's children out there that need help. So if you're going to talk the talk, you got to walk the walk. Yankee, what brand of rifle did you use in the army? Well, I never hardly ever carried a rifle in the army. I seldom ever saw a rifle in the army. After I got out of basic training, I think I touched a rifle at qualification a few times, <laughs> and that was about it. Uh, my sidearm issued was a... Uh, have I ever had an ejector rod unscrew a bit and lock up a cylinder? No. I, well, I've actually had that happen, yeah, but it was because I was fucking with it. Not because it actually like happened while I was shooting. If you take care of your guns, they'll take care of you. Uh, but what I was saying, uh, my sidearm in the military was a was an M9, so I never got to really touch a rifle hardly ever in the military. I was an infantry, and you know. So, have you seen forks over knives? No, I don't think I have. G2 ammo is junk. Won't penetrate enough to do any damage. Okay. Uh, I dare you to shoot yourself with a foot with it. How often do you change the springs on Beretta 92? Well, just keep checking your springs, check your tension. Uh, you can always do a resistance check on your springs. If they start to get weak, replace them, but they can handle a lot of rounds. So I think on like, like on most tiny little guns, most tiny, like when you get into guns, super tiny, like LCP, LCRs, not LCRs, uh, LCPs and C camps and NAAs, they will actually say change your springs every two to four or 500 rounds, sometimes low as 200, much as 500. On bigger guns, they'll usually say, you know, what, like a thousand rounds, 2,000 rounds. So springs are cheap. Just keep them around. Check your spring. Excuse me. When you clean your gun, check your springs. If it needs replaced, replace it. I never make a big deal out of it. I never worry about it. I just do it when I do it. That was from Stephen Burnside again. Uh, does does silver bullets, you mean do silver bullets work as well on midget hookers as they do on werewolves? Not does, uh, and that's Alan B. Pro. Uh, I would assume they would. Uh, the, only thing, the only difference I would say between a, a midget hooker and a werewolf with a silver bullet is with a werewolf shot placement doesn't matter as much because it's the silver that kills them just being in their system. Uh, with a, with a uh, midget hooker, you don't shoot them right. You just go piss them off because they're not going to die from the silver. So shot placement is king when shooting midget hookers, even if you use silver bullets. Ed and Jacqueline Caulfield, we will trade you Justin Trudeau and Quebec for Trump. No, I couldn't put up with Quebec. Uh, I have never been as unhappy with a place. Well, I have, but let's just say in North America, I've never been any place I liked less than Quebec. Uh, 
just did not like it at all. And I do not like Justin Trudeau at all. I've always said many times, like, how can anyone slam Trump from Canada when they have Trudeau? Trudeau is totally unqualified, never had any experience. He's nothing but a he's poster boy. You've got that dumbass leading your country that I guess you didn't vote for him. That's one thing you can say. But yeah, if, if you've got that guy as your leader, you can't say anything bad about Trump. So I'm a meatitarian. Me too. I love meat. In fact, I'm going to go claim jumper right now and eat a big old plate of it. Uh, so it is now five o'clock and I said, I can only do this for an hour today. So thanks to all the people that showed up today. Uh, thanks to, uh, uh, the people that support me on Patreon, thanks to the people who donated here to the uh, Super Chat. I uh, hope I got all the questions. Uh, I'll be back Thursday. We'll definitely announce the winner of the sh uh, Shockwave Shotgun on Thursday. I actually drew one before this chat, but then had to go, oh, crap. That person, even though they're still listed as a supporter, hasn't actually paid anything in three months. They get denied every month. So I'm like, ah, crap. Or no way. I think they cleared one month and then they got denied last two months. But they're still listed on my list. So I'm like, crap, I can't give them a gun. They're not a current supporter. So I have to redo it again and I'll do it again. It doesn't take long, but I just don't got time to do it right here. And I got to make a list because I got to download the list of people. So it gives a line number. You missed my super cat chat. Uh, let me go up and look and see. Kohler saying I missed their super chat. Okay, okay. <clears throat> Robert B. Kohler Jr. is asking, do you think the HPA law will pass? No, I do not. Uh, hate to say it, but yeah, I do not think it will pass. People will say, oh, the URA is our biggest voice. Well, where's their fucking voice on this? So, nope, I don't think it's going to pass. It's just going to fade away, die in committee. Which is why well, I'm going to go ahead and go buy some uh, suppressors next month because... Why wait? Because I don't think it's ever going to pass. And someone, Charles Dunn, donated $2 and said, penis wrinkles. Are we just shouting out things we like? Uh, pork rinds. There. I do like pork rinds. I'd like some pork rinds right now. But like I said, I uh, got to get out of here. So thanks to everyone for coming. Uh, thanks for people that uh, donate to me on Patreon. Thanks to people that donate to the Puppy Fund here on Super Chat. Uh, thanks to people who watch my videos on YouTube. Even if you don't have the money to support, uh, get out there, be vocal, spread the word, do stuff yourself, make your own videos if you can, and just have a good time, I guess, and enjoy the 4th fourth, the fourth this week. Although my town just outlawed fucking fireworks, and so I got to go outside the city limits here to do fireworks, but luckily the gun shop over here is doing fireworks, uh, so we can go over there and let them off over at uh, Safe Fire in Vancouver. So we're going to have to go over there, but because uh, we got a bunch of politicians in Vancouver now that want to have a future career up in, you know, Seattle and in uh, Tacoma, so, and Olympia. So they're trying to be really assholes. Although it wasn't really them. I, I love to say that and so I pretend it was liberals that banned fireworks, but it was actually the bigger businesses in our town. All the conservative interests, the churches and crap joined together and helped get it fucking banned because you don't want those kids out there burning down houses. I don't remember any houses burning down any time lately on 4th of July. And here's the thing. If you're worried about your house burning down, stand out there with a hose, make sure it doesn't. But I still think people should be able to celebrate 4th of July. So thanks to everyone for coming. Thanks for all the support. And like I said, I will see you all next Thursday, which I will announce the winner of the Shockwave and should have the patches uh, already ordered and ready to go. The patches, as far as patches go, the reduced type in an actual stitched patch one, that's going to be the patch we're making. I know that's going to disappoint some people. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make that patch first. And then in a couple of months, I'm going to make the PVC ones with the full text and people that are still supporting will end up getting both because they'll get this one for their support. They've done now. And then in a couple of months, they'll get that one. So maybe I'll start doing like different editions of supporter patches, you know, like change the color or change the year on them or something. So people can know, like I've been a supporter for this many years. So I've got this many badges. And then I want to do like, if you've done it for like five years or something, once you get like five patches, you actually get a, a, a metal badge, you know, with my logo and stuff on it. And maybe if I can do it, I'd love to put people's names on their badge, uh, you know, but we'll see. Uh, and once again, I haven't left. So, uh, I always get this where I jabber after I say I'm leaving. So anyone out there who leaves after I say I'm leaving, you probably shouldn't because I'm going to still talk for another 10 minutes. But uh, now I'm actually going. So once again, thanks to everyone for coming. Thanks for your support. And I will see you next Thursday.